hello students today's topic is microwave heating so this is a very common method of instant heating nowadays especially when you visit any kind of restaurant or even in some houses i'll say the microwave oven is very common item nowadays because the world is changing rapidly so do and nobody have that much time so it is a very convenient method so from today's lecture we will learn about what is microwave heating how this microwave heating works and how finally this uh, microwave oven works okay so when we start about microwave heating first of all we have to look at this electromagnetic spectrum and i think this picture is very familiar to you and in this picture you can see that there is a large gap here and as we are moving from right to left this gap is slowly you can say decreasing and the the gap between these two waves is decreasing also so as it has been mentioned here this is the distance between two crust or trough you can say that is known as wavelength so it is very simple and uh, well understood phenomena that uh, frequency and wavelength are inversely related if wavelength will decrease then frequency will increase so here you can see the uh, wavelength is around 10 days to 3 meter here it is 1 meter and uh, if we talk about the visible light the wavelength of the visible light is between 400 to 700 nanometer and finally we end up with gamma rays okay so what happens means as wavelength decreases frequency increase as far as the energy of the wave also increase higher the frequency higher will be the energy so in this diagrams you will say the first portion is indicating these are the radio waves and the audible uh, voice also falls under this range and the audible range for us is between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz fine and uh, if we move further then it is coming around 10 days to 8 hertz and this is the regions to which the microwave belongs and the microwaves are the in lies in the region of 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz so all the waves that lies between this zone zone will be termed as microwave so basically these microwaves and radio waves are used in the communications but uh, some scientists find their application in the food so that's why they are used in the microwave heating also so it is quite clear from the diagram that frequency is increasing from uh, right to left and uh, wavelength is decreasing fine so what happens in the microwave heating actually the product absorb the microwaves these are the electromagnetic waves and finally that product convert that uh, absorbed energy into heat as a result food get heated up so here is bit more for your interest that there is a uh, commission that is federal communication commissions of us fcc has set aside two frequencies for industrial scientific and medical apparatus in the microwave range and these are the two frequencies 915 and 2450 megahertz so these are the two frequencies which have been used or which are popularly used in the microwave heatings and these two uh, wavelength or oh sorry these two frequencies have been all allotted by this international Tem telecommunication unions because they lies between the in a range uh, that range of uh, this range is also used for the radar and the telephonic communications fine so just to avoid the interference these two special frequencies have been allotted for the microwave heating if it is less than or more than then it can cause problem in the operation of radar or flights you can say so now i'm coming to the next slide and we will talk about what is the basic theory of the microwave heating before that i'd like to introduce i think it is working or not yeah is it 
yeah yeah here you can see this is the man behind the whole story his name was Percy Spencer and he was the one who invented the microwaves and if you will read about the microwave heating or the history of the microwave on how it came into picture he was the person and he was working in a lab on microwaves or you can say this uh, electromagnetic waves and uh, one day he observed that he was uh, standing near to a magnetron. Magnetron is a device that used to produce these microwaves. So there was a candy in his pocket and he observed that that candy get melted. So they were doing some kind of other business but he observed that due to that microwaves this candy has been heated up. So he concluded that this microwave can also heat the food. Then he tried some experiment on the popcorns also and some other products and he established that microwaves can be used for the food heatings. So 19, it was the time of 1940. Then in 1947 uh, they developed a crude form of the microwave oven which was used widely but it became very means there was the further refinement in the design and the process and it became very popular in the year 1991. After that, the world market is flushing with the product and if you will visit any corner of the uh, Bhutan, then I think almost all restaurant used to have this microwave oven. Yeah, now I'm coming to the basic theory. As I said, the this is, yeah, more interestingly, it is a non-ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation means because the they have very less frequency comparative to the gamma rays and x rays their frequency is very high in comparison to microwave as a result they possess some energy and that energy is capable enough to ionize the metals or ionize the molecules inside any compounds but this is a non ionizing radiation microwaves are the non ionizing radiations and they lies between the frequency ranges is from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz as i discussed that these two frequency have been allocated to use in the microwave oven one is the 915 and second is the uh, 2450 megahertz and these have been allocated by the international telecommunication unions so if somebody asks why we use this 915 and uh, uh, 2450 there is no other reasons just to avoid the interference with the telecommunication systems. These two special uh, designated frequencies were, have been used for the microwave oven. So most of the domestic ovens operate at 2450 megahertz. If we talk about the property of the microwaves, microwaves behave same as a light wave. They can pass through a tube and they, they can be focused as a beam also. And uh, if we talk about their uh, uh, means a path of propagations, so they are reflected by large metallic objects. I mean to say that uh, if we keep any metallic object inside the uh, microwave oven, it will not get heated up because it will deflect the whole microwaves. It is absorbed by some dielectric materials. So dielectric materials are those materials which are basically behaving as an insulator but when they are put in a high electric field then they may start behaving as a electrical conductors. So some dielectric materials like small strips of metal having water and carbons they can behave as a uh, they can absorb this uh, microwave and food are also a part food products are also dielectric materials that's why the, the food product absorb the microwaves it is transmitted through the other dielectric materials there are some other dielectric material like glass ceramics and most of the thermoplastic that allows the microwave to pass through with the little or no absorptions so it is uh, the reason that's why we can heat the product inside the package let it is wrapped in a polythene or any kind of uh, polyester or any kind of thermoplastics and uh, same is the reasons for the glass that whenever we heat the product we generally use to keep it inside the 
glass and then finally place it inside the microwave oven. So how microwaves cause heating? <coughs> or if we talk about what is the mechanism of heating by microwaves then there are two mechanisms on which this system works first is the ionic polarization and second is the dipole rotations so ionic polarizations means that food is uh, having some ionic moieties or there is a concentration of ions inside the food and whenever we apply the electromagnetic waves or whenever we pass these microwaves, these are the electromagnetic waves and it creates an electric field. Due to that electric field, this, uh, there is acceleration in the movement of charged particles or especially the ions. So when this, this charged particle or these ions move at a faster rate, then there is a collision between this ionic particle and due to collisions the friction takes place and that frictions or you can say that is create a uh, rise in temperatures so ultimate thing is that due to collision the ions move at a accelerated pace due to their inherent charges and the resulting collision the resulting collision between the ion cause the conversion of kinetic energy of the moving ion into thermal energy you can just see that if you will contain some dipole particles or the polar items for example in this diagram it has been shown that this is the water molecule and uh, it has H2O oxygen is carrying a partially negative charge and this uh, H is H hydrogen and is carrying a partial positive charge so it we have as a polar item okay so these are available in abundant in the food product and whenever we apply this microwaves and as, as i said this microwaves having a frequency of 2450 so means in one second means there is a change in the polar the polarity alternates rapidly and uh, for example the microwave frequency if it is 2450 the polarity will change at a rate of 2.45 into 10 raised to power 9 cycles per second and the polar molecule rotate to maintain the alignment with the rapidly changing polarity such rotation of the molecules leads to friction with the surrounding so as a result the heat is generated so in this case in case of ionic polarization there was a collision and in this case there is a friction of the water molecule with the surrounding as a result heat is generated i hope you understand because the water molecule first tried to be move uh, towards to the upper side then it will towards to lower sides so in one second it has to pass through this much cycle as a result it is the micro sorry i have not increased the size huh? by which the microwave heating works first is the ionic polarization and second is the dipole rotation so in case of ionic polarizations there are some ions and uh, ions are available in the food and then whenever we apply this electric field these ions move at a accelerated pace due to their inherent charge the resulting collisions between the ions when they move at a faster rate there is a collision between the ions and due to collisions the there is a conversion of kinetic energy into thermal energy second i said this electric field is applied to the food mean to say that when we apply the microwave then it will create an electric field and due to this applied electric field the molecule orients themselves according to the polarity of the field and in doing so there will be a friction of these molecules with the surrounding as a result heat will be generated okay here in the corner you can see how you can find out the wavelength as i said in case of microwave heating we use two frequency one is the 915 and second is the 
2450. So you have studied about, I think, lambda is equal to c by f in your lower classes. Lambda is the wavelength, c is the speed of light, and f is the frequency. So c is the speed of light. This is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second, and the frequency is uh, 915 megahertz so it is uh, if you will solve it it will come to around 0.3 to 8 meter for the wave uh, for the microwave in which the wavelength this frequency is 915 and for the uh, the wave having the higher frequency the wavelength will be around 0.122 meter so, if somebody asks how this microwave heating is different from the conventional heating. So, in this lectures, especially in the fourth unit, we have studied about different type of mode of heat transfers. And uh, in that we have studied about conduction, convection and radiations. So, most of the conventional heating like we are boiling the water or we are cooking the rice in the kitchen, then that is a type of convective heating. First of all, this your uh, utensil get heat up and then finally you have a uh, solution or suspension in which water is there and then there may be a rise. So there will be a heat transfer between the solid and fluid. So if it is a, uh, what you say, a conventional type of heat transfer, then this will approach like this, means there will be a high heating at the surface. Okay, so that's why and finally the heat will move from slowly from surface to center this blue zone is indicating the cold point the point which attain the maximum temperature uh, you can say whatever the desired temperatures so the 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 core of the food materials receive that temperature after a longer time in the meantime, there are the possibility that the surface may be heated or overheated and sometime you might have seen the browning on the bread surface. That is due to the, this overheating. So this is a surface phenomena and uh, opposite to this in case of microwave heating, how microwave heating works, let we have placed this food product inside the microwave oven. So this microwave will came inside and they will reach to the center and then they will, you can say they have entered in the whole product and they will start doing their mechanism by dipole rotation or ionic polarization, whatever. So, whole of the food will be heated instantaneously and uniformly. That's why it is known as volumetric heating. So, the highest heat generation will be in the center and as it reaches to the surface, the heating will be comparatively less. That's why the bread that you can use to prepare in the microwave heatings may not have the uh, this outer color crust color so to define the microwave heating we need to read about dielectric properties also in the first or second slide i said that the microwaves are reflected by the metallic particle but there are some dielectrical particles they absorb the heat and I said food product is a dielectric particles. Most of the food products are the dielectric particles. So, in, if we talk about the dielectric properties, then there are two main properties. One is the relative dielectric constant. It is represented by epsilon dash. And second is the relative dielectric loss, epsilon double dash. So, this is this uh, dielectric loss factor it denotes the ability of material to dissipate the electrical energy I mean to say that let take it in a very easy way this value will represent how much energy will be stored fine and this value will define that how much this electrical energy will be converted into heat energy and it can be calculated by this simple equations. This uh, epsilon double dash will equal to epsilon dash tangent delta. Tangent delta will define that uh, means how much conversion of this, what you say, uh, this absorbed heat is taking place into 
absorbed electrical energy is taking place into heat. So this is about dielectric property and conversion of microwave heat, microwave energy into heat. It is given by this particular equation. PD is equal to 55.61 into 10 raised to minus 4 E square frequency epsilon dash tangent delta. So this dielectric constant and uh, lowest tangent that is tangent delta are the properties of the material this one and this one while the electric field strength that is E square and the frequency represent the energy source. So the conversion of microwave energy into heat will depend both on the properties of the food as well as on the properties of the electromagnetic or the microwave that we are using. So it is directly proportional to the electric field strength applied and it is even square of this electric field strength applied. So it is quite ob uh, obvious that if the electric field strength applied is higher then the rate of heating will be higher or the conversion of microwave energy into heat will be higher. Yeah, this is written here you can read. Uh, it's very bit complex but uh, we will try to understand how means the penetration depth of microwaves means to which depth microwaves can penetrate. So to simply understand it the penetration depth can be calculated or is defined as the distance like in this plot you can see the depth into material this arrow is indicating the depth into material fine and here is the air or it is the microwave. Fine. So the distance at which microwave power is reduced to 1 by E. 1 by E is the E, the value of E is here given 2.718. See here, it is the actual power. P naught is indicating the actual power when it is outside the, this is the surface and it was maximum power and as it enters or travel inside the food product, it will lose the energy and at this point the energy has been decreased to 1 by E, 1 by E of P naught. So this much will be the depth in case of microwave heating. Second we can describe it with the help of attenuation factors. So this attenuation factor is the alpha dash value and uh, it gives the value of Z. Z is again the depth you can say. The depth below the surface of the material which the electric field strength is 1 by E. And here you can see the value of this Z has been given. And it has been shown that the value of Z is directly proportional to the wavelength. If the wavelength is higher then the penetration will be more. And we know the wavelength is inversely related to frequency. So this frequency is less in comparison to this frequency. So for sure the wavelength of this particular frequency microwave will be higher than this one. So we can say that uh, the depth of the penetration of this 915 megahertz will be more than uh, the wavelength having the frequency 2000. So if we talk about the working of microwave oven, so first thing required is the power supply. First of all we should have a power supply and most of the power supply that is available in the domestic use is AC power supply. Then this AC power supply is converted into DC supply. For that we need a good capacity transformer and this transformer releases a high voltage DC. Then this DC is sent to the magnetron. And this device is the key component of the microwave oven. It emits or it radiates microwaves, electromagnetic microwaves. These microwaves are then taken further with a waveguide. Waveguide is a metallic tunnel. As I said, metals used to deflect the microwave. So this magnetron generates the microwave and then they travel via the waveguide. Waveguide is simply you can take it kind of channel. Then they are passed or they are 
scattered or distributed inside the cooking cavity with the help of a stirrer. Stirrer is a type of fan because the microwaves are coming in form of a beam. So the stirrer will help them to distribute evenly. So if we talk about this uh, cooking cavity, the cooking cavity is having a metallic surface and this metallic surface is a perfect, uh, you can say, perfectly reflecting surface. On the platforms, we have a, sometimes we have a rotating type of mechanism, sometimes it may be fixed. So rotation is generally provided just so that your food product get exposed to the maximum number of microwaves. So this microwaves are entering in the cavity, they will strike to the surface and will deflect and finally will make an angle of incidence so that it will, uh, uh, you can say this, the, they will incident on the food product. And after that, it, it will get, get exposed to the microwaves, the food will heat up. So this is all about, thank you very much. If you open it, stop here. Yeah.